Glad to have you back, everyone, and glad it's Thursday just because it's one day closer to Friday and thus Saturday. 14th day of November's not been all that bad, and we've got some improving weather for you in the forecast. And on that note, I'm also glad to tell you that as of right now, the window of some showers and possibly some thunderstorms looks to have been bumped up maybe into later Sunday evening or overnight. Now, severe weather threats during the overnight are never a good thing. You want to see it coming, but if it's just run-of-the-mill showers and thunderstorms, well, I'd rather see them at night and not during the day over the course of your weekend. That's the scenario as it looks right now. We'll talk about it, though, in much more detail. We've got a whole lot of things happening in the weather department, as we always do. But nevertheless, in addition to showers and storms that will accompany possibly, well, not possibly, but possibly accompany some much milder air over the course of your weekend, we're talking about the return of Arctic-like temperatures during parts of next week. Oh, joy, joy. We'll outline all of that in more detail in the latter part of the program. An auto accident that may or may not have resulted in a arrest earlier today. I'll explain and take you to the scene in a few moments and we'll spend some time this evening covering as I only briefly referred to this Monday the Kentucky Biking Association's annual meeting which they held here in eastern Kentucky very near and dear to the Dolphins Trail which I think is going to become a very popular topic of discussion and not just a popular tourist designation. A great deal of information, more details in comparison for example, to the Creeper Trail in Virginia, which has been a major economic boon to that part of uh, their area, and how we stand to benefit in the same fashion, if not more. I've got some information that I think will excite a whole lot of folks when we get to it. Only a couple of things before we get there. The first, while Kentucky's Attorney General Jack Conway has filed an official request for the State Public Service Commission to reevaluate its approval to close part of the Big Sandy Power Plant in Lawrence County. The company is still intent on shutting down a coal-fired unit at the plant next year in what it is calling a move that will result in a less of a rate increase on customers than it would be if they upgraded the plant to meet with federal air guidelines and standards. And on the heels of that report, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is the nation's largest public utility, just today announced that it has voted to close six coal-powered units in the states of Alabama and to replace two or more in Kentucky with new natural gas plants. The TVA Authority's CEO, Bill Johnson, has said that more and more stringent environmental impacts and regulations and a stagnant power demand have all made it necessary for the company to reevaluate how they generate power. Board members from Alabama and Kentucky said the closures were difficult but necessary. Another closure of sorts in regards to a Magoffa County roadway. The State Department of Transportation sent me the following notice saying that Kentucky 867 here in Magoffa County off of Burning Fork will be closed for paving. Uh, it's a work zone that will begin at the intersection of 1888 and 867. Uh, one and a half miles to be paved towards Royalton. The entire width of the road is going to be resurfaced and the machine that they're using will pave the entire width of the road in one run. So. Therefore, no one-lane traffic will be a possibility. Uh, no sign detour is going to be posted, so you're on your own. You can either use 7 or Burning Fork on either side of the project as a way around the closure. Weather permitting, it's expected to take one day to complete. And it's all going to happen tomorrow. Now you know. A pause, a few words from some of our sponsors. A reminder to you to remind them and let them know that you're watching whenever you can. Certainly helps keep the lights on around here. Keep the lights on. And with that said, when we come back, an auto accident that tied up traffic just after school today. And like I said, of exciting details, I think, to bring you about the Dolphins Trail. Stay tuned. Let's do this. Can't believe my daughter wants to marry a Hatfield. And I can't believe my son fell in love with a McCoy. I got one thing to say. They're going to have the wireless plan with the best service. And I say they're going to have the wireless plan with the biggest saving. Daddy! Hush up, Mary Beth. Pa. Stay out of this, Jonah. We're done talking. You got that right. Better service. Bigger saving. Daddy, we've both got Appalachian Wireless. Better service. Bigger saving. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Have a buck. Get a truck. Now at Hutch Chevrolet, buy any new or pre-owned truck or car for one buck. And get a shotgun or rifle just in time for deer season. If you got one buck, get a truck. For example, 2013 Chevy Silverado was $37,000. Bucks and trucks price $25,990. 
only at Hutch Chevrolet, Buick GMC in Paintsville, Kentucky. One seventies, five hundred, five seventy, eight hundred, nine hundred, two seats, four seats, razors, rangers, and XPs in the hottest colors with the coolest accessories, with the best financing available, and rebates up to a grand at Conley's Kawasaki and Polaris of Paintsville. Hi, I'm Don McFarland, and I want to be your family lawyer. Sometimes we all have troubles in our life, and when we do, it's good to have a friend that you can call on and during times of legal trouble. Please give me a call. I have been here my entire life. I was born here, I was raised here, I have a family here, and I've practiced law here since 1994. So if you ever have pain, if you ever have trouble, if you're ever in need, then pick up the phone and call Donald Wayne, 349-9000. At the end of every race, Mark Martin hangs up his driving gloves. He hangs up his fire suit. And he hangs up his helmet which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra at Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Game time means a wing time at Lee's, and that means it's time for you to try our new buffalo wings. I can't tell you our secret, but I can tell you they're marinated and then rolled in our famous, albeit a little spicy, crispy chicken batter and served up with any of our seven delectable sauces. So get your hands on a meal or a box today at your Sayersville Lee's Hamus Recipe, where no one does chicken like we do chicken. A traffic accident tied up old 460 right around the time school was letting out for quite some time. Two men in one vehicle as it left the roadway over an embankment. Uh, upon my leaving the scene, authorities and the driver and passenger all trying to decide on whose marijuana was in the car. The Sagersville Fire Department, McGoffin Rescue Squad, Sheriff's Department, and State Police, Transtar Ambulance Service, all responded to a single vehicle auto accident at the junction of Route 30 and 460 headed out of Sagersville. Two men in the car, operator Jimmy Kraft and passenger Doyle Patrick, were both outside upon arrival of emergency personnel exhibiting signs of non-life-threatening injuries, both trying to decide, according to police, whose marijuana was in the vehicle. Deputies found at least two baggies of marijuana that appeared to be bagged for resale inside the vehicle. The cause of the accident is still unknown. The driver, Kraft, lost control of the vehicle. It took out a road sign, as you can see, and came to rest completely over the embankment and almost underneath the level of the roadway. As I said, both were out of the vehicle upon arrival of emergency personnel and refused medical treatment at the scene. Our other top story coming up in a few moments, but for now, it's time to see what's happening. As we do every night on our community calendar, as is every night, brought to you by your local McGoffin Farm Bureau agent, Doug Green, at 349-2416. First up, though, a birthday. A very happy birthday wish to Mercedes Whitaker. Love mom, dad, mamas, papas, family, and friends. Everybody say it. Happy birthday, Mercedes Whitaker. Just a couple of reminders on tonight's calendar. The first, that fresh pecans are available through the McGoffin County Woman's Club. Buy the bag, that's buy the pound bag, $10, and that's 349-5918. That's the number to call or contact any McGoffin County Woman's Club. Fresh pecans just in time for holiday baking and maybe a little snacking. A night of worship at the New Life Worship Center presented by the Youth Ministry is the one and the many. This worship band leads worship for the Hyman Student Ministries in Hyman at the Baptist Church, so be sure to bring your family and friends and be a part of the event. For a night of worship this Friday, folks, Friday's tomorrow. That's at 7 o'clock, once again, at New Life Worship Center. The Sagittal Trinity Full Gospel Church is putting on some youth skits tomorrow and Saturday evening, 7 o'clock both nights. This is your invitation to join them. And this is your invitation, kids, and those a little older, I guess, too, to sign up for the Miss and Master Christmas Sparkle Pageant. It's going to be held December the 6th in the Sagersville Grade School Gym, following the same criteria as the Miss and Master Firecracker Pageants, with the addition of prettiest eyes, prettiest hair, prettiest smile, just casual Christmas wear, no big, elegant, 
really pageant dresses or anything of that nature. Categories for newborns to six months, six to 12 months, 12 to 24, and kids two to three, four to five, six to eight, and nine to 12. Also a teen division for middle school students and a Mr. and Mrs. for high schoolers. All pageant winners are invited, of course, and encouraged to ride in the Christmas parade, which is December the 7th. Oh, and by the way, I am scheduled to interview somebody tomorrow who can tell us more about this year's Saggersville Hometown Christmas. So, tune in tomorrow. That's one of the stories we plan to have. December the 7th will be here before you know it. I mean, literally, we're talking, what, three weeks? Oh, my goodness. With that said, this is how you get announcements just like this in the program. Our community calendar has been a service since we've been on air for now 15 years and counting. It's always been free and the best way to let everyone know what you or your organization has planned. And don't forget, we love birthdays and anniversaries just as well, and they're free too. And these are all the links that you have to get them to us, besides just dropping them off here at the newsroom on East Maple Street. Funeral arrangements brought to you on behalf of our friends at the McGoffin County Funeral Home and McGoffinFuneralHome.com. That's McGoffinCountyFuneralHome.com. And arrangements are still incomplete in honor of 74-year-old Helen Fern Rose of Strawberry Plains, Tennessee, formerly of McGoffin County. She passed away on Tuesday of this week at the LeConte Medical Center in Sevierville, Tennessee. She preceded in death by her husband, Ireland Rose. As I said, funeral arrangements still incomplete at this hour, but to be announced soon by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Saggersville Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce the newest members of our family, Administrator Elaine Jones and our full-time chaplain Mark Campbell and volunteer Richard Green, new faces with the same sincere desire as these to assist you and your family with short-term rehabilitation solutions or long-term nursing care needs close to home and those that you love. Saggersville Nursing and Rehabilitation. Bailey's Furniture has done it again. This beautiful queen-size sleigh bed, media center, and matching chest are only $2.95 each, whether you buy one or buy them all. And you can save $400 and get a second nightstand with this gorgeous Von Bassett group. Lazy Boy Rocker Recliner start at $2.95 and Catnapper Lift Chairs start at $6.89 at Bailey's Furniture and GE Appliance Center. From time and money saving services like their overdraft protection, telephone and online banking services, to finding the right home, college or car loan, to personalized checking and savings accounts designed around your exact needs, Sagersville National Bank is still your best choice and the same locally owned and operated bank that's been looking out for your family's financial health since 1902. Sagersville National, restoring the piggy bank population one savings at a time. It's so new it doesn't even have a name, but it does have an amazing taste all its own. Four pancakes, butter, syrup, plus your choice of any of our dozens of DQ toppings with a little whipped cream on top and, of course, some of our world-famous DQ soft serve. And you can add bacon, sausage, or even a little country ham for a full-blown breakfast treat. So sink your taste buds into a quarter or even half-pound grill burger fixed exactly like you like. And you want to know the best part? James says you can have either one for breakfast as early as you want, but only at your Sagersville DQ. They've got mug boots for the hills and the mud, work boots for on and off the job, like the newest and maybe most comfortable, hardest working Red Wing ever. They've got western boots for kicking up your heels and a whole new store full of the newest styles from all the famous makers you love, like Wrangler, Carhartt, Ariat, Miss Me, Leathers by Scully, and more at the brand spanking new Red's Boot Barn in Sagersville. It's a time to cherish and a time to remember the reason pause and relish in the joy and spread the spirit of the Christmas season and it's all best done with a holiday stop at the seasonal shop where they're having their annual open house Thursday Friday Saturday the 14th through the 16th 9 to 6 every day they'll be serving hot and cold holiday refreshments you can take at least 20% off the entire store up to 70% off select merchandise and an extra 20% off all clearance items a free gift with every purchase and be sure to register for one of the great door prizes. The annual Fraser's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop Christmas Open House, the 14th, 15th, and 16th in downtown Sagersville.
The Kentucky Biking Association wrapped up its annual meeting on Saturday, the last day reserved for a ride on the new Dolphins Trail. The second day of the event focused on discussion and presentations and information specifically about the Dolphins Trail. And that's what we'll cover this evening. They discussed how it, like other trails in comparison, has the great opportunity and ability to stimulate a great amount of economic growth, generate a, ground, a great amount of revenue, at the same time giving us all something to do, at the same time an experience that you can't have in, say, western Kentucky or elsewhere on a trail like you can in the beautiful landscape of eastern Kentucky. They also announced during the meeting that the second phase, the final portion, Phase two, which is another 18 miles of the trail, is slated to be completed by the fall of next year, which is pretty significant. They also compared the Dawkins Trail to the Virginia Creeper Trail. It's a comparison that's been drawn since the Dawkins Trail was first conceived, really, and the idea of it, at least. And basically, the Virginia Creeper Trail has been a popular tourist designation for years. Here, as of late, it's really changed the landscapes economically and visually of two small towns, Abingdon and Damascus, Virginia. Abingdon, for example, had a population of about, and still does, 8,300 in coal country. Uh, as a prior history of tourism with the arts, uh, the Creeper Trail is 34 miles. It started back in the 1990s. Prior to that, the Barter Theater was and still is a major tourist attraction, a theater that got its name from bartering when it opened up years and years ago, back in around 1933, I think it was. It got its name from allowing folks who wanted to come and see the theater to barter, trade livestock or produce for the ticket price. Since then, it's become a popular tourist designation. Some big names you might recognize, Ernest Borgnine, Kevin Spacey, Gregory Peck, the list goes on. But now they have another tourism attraction, which they say is drawing as much, if not more, individuals from all over the world, and that's the Virginia Creeper Trail. Tanya Triplett, to the far left of your screen, of the Abingdon Convention and Visitors Bureau was there and presented information on both of the small towns, Damascus and Abingdon. Damascus, a population of 980, that's less than 1,000. The town doesn't even have any red lights, and they barely saw anyone besides their neighbors before the Virginia Creeper Trail. And that's changed. The Appalachian Trail Days Festival, which started in 85, in its first year drew 25 people. A few years later, it's drawing 25,000 from all over the world. And the trail is a big, if not the entire part of that attraction. It's about how this trail has forever changed the geographic and economic landscape of these two towns, which, except for the Barter Theater, had no other real tourism draw. And for a small town like Damascus, certainly, you can draw a real comparison between it and Salyersville. Don Fields owns Pro Fitness in Prestonsburg, and as he was about to depart on Saturday's ride on the Dawkins Trail, part of that three-day event that I've been telling you about, he was talking about how the event was in part there to inform and excite us and others from elsewhere specifically elsewhere, we want their money to come here, about the possibilities, the potential that can be capitalized upon in regards to tourism and our own Dawkins Trail. Folks, uh, the group I'm getting ready to lead today is from the uh, KBBC, which is the Kentucky Bicycle and Bikeways Commission. They have an annual meeting every year to discuss uh, different ways to fund routes and trails for bicycles and pedestrians in the state of Kentucky. And this year they chose to come to Prestonsburg to have their annual meeting uh, due to the fact that the Dawkins Trail had opened here recently in June. And they wanted to see the trail and take a ride on it. And uh, being so much interest in the trail now, they decided to have their meeting here. And uh, I was very fortunate to uh, be invited to attend the meeting. Uh, my name is Don Fields and I'm the owner of Pro Fitness Multisports in Prestonsburg. I've had a bike shop here in Prestonsburg for 18 years and, along with my fitness center. We sell running shoes, uh, equipment, outdoors uh, equipment, uh, bicycles, kayaks, paddle boards, skateboards. Plus, it's a, a gym, a fitness center where you can come and work out. And most people know us by that, but a lot of people don't know that we sell bicycles also. 
the day before Fields, um, a few representatives of Your News Today, and a handful of local representatives sat in, though, on presentations and discussions about the endless possibilities and revenue generated by similar trails and how our own Dawkins Trail has the ability to supersede all of that. Case in point, the Virginia Creeper Trail in the towns of Abingdon and Damascus. Like I said earlier, the Damascus town with a population of about 980, which has blossomed into a popular tourist designation for thousands from all over the world every year, generating millions of dollars in economic growth. city of Abington, for example, now has nine hotels. And nowhere is it more evident than the story of Phoebe Cartwright. She started what turned into the Blue Blaze Bike Shop, a bicycle service that she started with an old church van out of her home one of many businesses which have grown and flourished alongside the Creeper Trail. So she leased the back of the building to the Damascus Public Works for them to keep their shop equipment in, and she operated Blue Blaze Bike Service out of the front of that building. She did that for 10 years. Remember I told you she started out with an old run-down van from the Methodist Church and a trailer. And the next year she added eight bicycles. She kept that business for 10 years, and a uh, gentleman bought it. He bought the building, he bought four vans, he bought four trailers, and he bought 60 bicycles. <coughs> she was telling me that uh, she really didn't have that much money for marketing, so she did do a lot of marketing other than the rack cards. Uh, but this little magazine called Southern Living <laughs> <laughs> came to Damascus, and she could not remember the year that they came, that they did an article on the Virginia Creeper Trail, and she said at that point, she said it was amazing at the uh, publicity that they were doing to get. Uh, Damascus was just, you know, every, every day of the week during the summertime, if you go to Damascus, it's, it's packed. October is unbelievable um, for, the, for that small town. Uh, this is some pictures that we have recently uh, had made on the trail. And this is the, the only bike shop in Abingdon. Remember I told you when Phoebe started out, there was the one. When um, she sold that property, she, that's the number of vans and buildings that she had. That gentleman, I talked to him on the phone the other day, and he has now eight vans, eight trailers, 120 <coughs> bicycles. But he's one of seven bike shops in the One of seven. <laughs> What do you think of that? When I found out uh, 10 years ago that this trail was being considered, I, I was extremely excited. I had already been to the Creeper Trail many times. I've been riding the Creeper Trail since it opened uh, back in the late 80s. Uh, I was going through Damascus before the Creeper Trail opened, and there was nothing there but a gas station. Now Damascus is huge. They, they sometimes have 20,000 people a weekend riding the Creeper Trail, and the Dawkins Trail has the same potential as the Creeper Trail did. It brings in millions of dollars annually to the economy of Abington and Damascus in Virginia. Well, what do you, uh, uh, have you, have you been on this, have you ridden this trail yet? Or I've, you just... I've ridden this trail many times, several times. I rode it a couple times before it was actually open. As I said, I was very excited and interested in this trail. And uh, I've, I've led several groups on the trail and I've ridden it alone several times. The nice thing about this trail uh, that you'll see is that you can ride it on any kind of bicycle. It doesn't have to be a mountain bike, it can be a road bike, a, a cruiser, a single speed, a kid's bike. This trail is very, very well constructed. Some other numbers, business licenses, just business licenses in Abingdon generate nearly $1 million a year alone. Meals and lodging taxes, about $350,000 a year. And for a small town in Virginia, nine hotels. And that same small town sees tens of thousands of people Sometimes, as you heard Don say, on a weekend, the numbers are simply astronomical. And Don's not the only person to believe that the Dawkins Trail has the same, if not a greater potential. I think it's going to grow enormously this year. We're already seeing, uh, I'd, I'd say on a Saturday, Sunday, most any weekend this past year, we've seen 100 to 200 people on this trail. You can't count those people because there's no way to count them. But I know them and I see them and some of them are coming to my shop next year it's going to take off and over the next five years this trail will grow and it's up to the local residents and business owners uh, in the area to support the trail and to learn how to increase the economy in this area which as we all know we need very much 
Now, if you want to talk more to Don about his business, I'm sure he would like to talk about the trail. Seems pretty interested in it and its future. And I'm sure not just from a business aspect either. He's in Prestonsburg. Uh, best direction I can give you would be when you come into the downtown Prestonsburg area, you cross the bridge, and then you have to go left or right or, or into the bushes. <laughs> you take a right, and about a mile and a half or so out through there on your left is where he's located. I'll be stopping in with him soon, and then maybe we'll share something uh, with you from that visit. But for now, i got to wrap it up with one last order of business. You know what it is. It's coming at you right now as soon as I can get it queued up, and that's your Licking Valley RECC forecast where... Things are improving just a bit. 27 is better than 15. It's always greater than 15 <laughs> when you're talking about nighttime lows and on the number scale. Nevertheless, 15 was the low for last night. I had 17 here at the newsroom this morning. Topped out at 61, though. Pretty nice in the afternoon. Tonight, a low of 27 degrees under clear skies, taking us into da, 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 your Friday, which, you know, pretty nice. 55 Maybe a bit conservative. I'm hopeful maybe hitting the upper 50s. But nevertheless, National Weather Service says it. I'll go with it. 55, followed by a nighttime low of 41. That's much more favorable tomorrow night. It's going to be mostly sunny. Beautiful Friday. There will be some clouds rolling in late tomorrow night. And they are going to leave pretty much by your Saturday for the most part. Look at the warm air rushing in. 65, partly sunny. 49 for your low. First half of your weekend is gorgeous. Christmas lights might be a good project. <laughs> we will see more clouds come back in Saturday night, and those won't be going away Sunday. The warm air is not going away either. 71 degrees, 50 for the low. But with all that warm air, you got to pay to play. Mostly cloudy skies will give way to a chance of showers. And as of right now, we're talking about a 30% chance, mainly after 3 or 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon, a greater chance Sunday night. Now, there is a chance for a severe weather threat or two. I'm holding off, hoping that it's going to be more of a thunderstorm issue, and that's about as severe as it's going to get for us, and I'm hoping that it's going to hold off until the evening if there's no severe weather associated with it. We'll know more tomorrow when I see you and get ready to leave you for the weekend, but that's how the weather forecast is playing out for now. It's also going to go back down to around 59 on your Monday, and we'll see the 40s return for a few days next week. Aren't you excited? <laughs> that's my time for now. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. For more of your news today. Good night. Thanks for watching.